friends, this is a great privilege to be invited by Government of India from CM Rep, where I am spending my one prast. Because in this August assembly, some people thought that I am an overseas Indian who has been invited by Government of India. I worked till the age of 60 here in India, born in India. And since the Government of India has a rule, and all the governments have, that after 60 years, you are no good to work, I went to Cambodia, where there is no retirement age. They send professor, come and work. And the first thing was, they sent go to Prehavihya temple, where Thais and Cambodians were fighting. So I remained some sort of a soldier for two years, Indian soldier of peace. And I found out that Prehavihya, I photoed extensively, I wrote a book, and I found out that that was a temple dedicated to dancing Shiva. Shiva has cut the head of an elephant, elephant which represents the, de the destructive forces, and then he is dancing there. Nobody in 100 years of uh, research has seen that. And I saw due to the grace of Shiva after staying there for two months. And now it had become a place where the Shiva is dancing. It was a very embarrassing position because in my whole career, I have been a great friend of Thai people also because in 1981, on my own as an individual, I established International Conference on Thai Studies and I brought 21 countries here in New Delhi. I, had, I have written the visit of King Chulalong Khan to India when he was of the age of 19. And that book was published in India, but it was translated into Thai language, and it was a bestseller for five years. But I did my uh, prayer via extinct, and Thais remain my good friend because ultimately they have understood that the heritage and the cultural property has to be the cementing and bonding force. So, now we are talking in English language but you know, we think here 10 ASEAN nations and one India, we are thinking in our own languages, our discourse. And this has been shown by the French writers and many of the writers. When Denis Lombard wrote Carrefour Javanese, Javanese Carrefour, he said that the Southeast Asians, and that is the same thing for Indians, we think in different ways. But, and when we produce it in uh, English, that is not what we say. So we are saying of connectivity. My dear friends, how you say connectivity in your own language? At least, I am aware of three languages of mainland Southeast Asia, Khmer, Thai, and Laotian. The word is Samfan, Sambandha in Sanskrit. We are trying to create Sambandha. Sambandha means we are trying to create the knots which are on the basis of equality, friends. This has been one of the errors of non-speaking English people. The, the people who, whose mother tongue is not English is that we feel that we are communicating our heart to you. So 
the basic strength which I have is that I learned the language in the streets of Southeast Asian nations in three months. I can communicate with them. What we have to do, our knowledge of Southeast Asia in India is minimal. We don't know more than Borobudur, Prambanan, Angkor, Angkor, and not Angkor, but Angkor what? I would request, because we are in the campus of Institute of Defense Studies, the concept of defense has to be radically changed. We have to create, the, the, the questions are the mental questions. Defense systems should study the psychology of people rather than, and defense is to protect the cultural properties of the world. Friends, so Southeast Asia, three, four, five major monuments. What do we know beyond that? I would say because we are in a military academy and the military principle is from map, from ground to map and from map to ground. Make the map of heritage of Southeast Asia. And when you will make the heritage of, uh, of, of, of Southeast Asia, when you will map the heritage of Southeast Asia, you will get at least 10,000 cul cultural dots. The whole map will be turned into 10,000 dots, 10,000 cultural points. And on each cultural point, there is an evidence that India and Southeast Asia joined hand together. Believe it, there are two things in the world, every nation, Shastra and Shastra. Shastra means arms. And Shastra, most of the languages of Southeast Asia, they have this word. Shastra means Pitya Shastra. Shastracha, I am Shastracha in Cambodia. I am Acharya of Shastras. So India had, since the beginning, we didn't have anything. Friends, we are, we are trying to boast today that we are rich, we are getting richer. But remember it, you are richer only through your sastras. And those sastras, so we went to Southeast Asia with, a, with our small books. And those sastras we transmitted to you, but I give you a book. But it is you who will learn it. I have no power to teach you unless you have a mind and faculty. So I thank you all from Southeast Asia to mastering the codes which Indians had made. And when you master the codes, what you did, we are happy that you made beautiful temples of Shiva, you made beautiful temples of Vishnu and all that. But if Picasso makes a drawing, nobody on the earth will say, even if it is inspired by Greek or Roman tradition, that it is a Greek art. Your art, what Southeast Asian produced, it may have the canons, the Shastras of India, but they are original art productions. What was produced in Southeast Asia has no prototype in India. It has, it has canonical sources. It has technical sources. And friends, once more I tell you, therefore, I am very thankful to Southeast Asia. The other thing for being thankful to you all ASEAN people is that India, which is a country which has been struggling 
by foreign forces for last two, three thousand years, we have lost many of our traditions, many of our chapters of history. And those things you have preserved in Southeast Asia. And nowadays, this is my good fortune that I am asking this question, why this? Do we not have in India? For example, the great god Bhadreshwar of Champa, of Prahavihya, of Angkor, Bhadreshwar, not Brihadeshwar. Nobody in India knows this Bhadreshwar. I also didn't know it. I knew from Southeast Asian sources. But now the book has come. You go to the far off villages, they have their temples, postmodern temples. Even in Bengal, there is a Bhadreshwar a station, everything. But we have not connected it because we have forgot it. We have forgot that Bhadreshwar was one of the biggest god of India at a time, and still six world heritage temples are dedicated to Bhadreshwar. If you go to Ahmedabad, in Ahmedabad the area is called Bhadreshwar. But nobody in Ahmedabad knows that this Bhadreshwar is related to Mission. Therefore, friends, you have preserved so many things. All of you are aware of Buddha Pada, footprints of Shiva, uh, Buddha. But nobody was ever aware of this fact that footprints of Shiva was spread all over Mekong Valley from the border of Laos up to the South Vietnam. So I wrote this book on Shiva Path, Rediscovering Angkor Empire in the Footprints of Shiva. So friends, so many chapters, so many parts which you have which you have preserved for that as a cultural historian, I thank you. Because you have got copious thanks from Government of India, from Ministry of External Affairs for so many reasons. But I thank you especially for preserving what we have lost. And the other thing is still I tell you that in India, we have reconstructed a history of, of India through Greek sources, Chinese sources, and what not. But we have never thought of Southeast Asia as a source of Indian history. And that is, they call me Southeast Asian historian. And uh, because, but I am a historian of India, who, Indian history, who is trying to reconstruct our lost past. And the lost past is not based on Sastra. It is not based on Sastra, but it is based on Sastra. Now I come to the last point, and this will be the last. I enjoyed perfectly your previous sessions in which you talked about Indian Ocean, in which you talked about blue economy and all that. And where you said, one of the Manila probably uh, Filipino said, that we are very happy to that Indian Navy was Indian Navy was present there. I tell you one thing that in our Sastras it is forbidden to fight beyond the an imagined territory of India. We can fight in India, but we never take arms outside India. But when it comes to Mat Senai, what is Mat Senai? Matsinaya is the logic of fish. Logic of fish is that the big fish eats the small fish. So the Indian Ocean, when I heard all your discourse, I found that Indian Ocean is now, the, uh, the logic is governed by the logic of fish, where the great fish is trying to eat the small fish. And I assure you, not on behalf of Minister of External Affairs of India, on behalf of Government of India, or on behalf of Defense Minister of India, but on behalf of, as a citizen, on behalf of many, many of my co-citizens, that Indian Navy will be everywhere where it will be needed
to fight the logic of fish. Be sure of it. And that gave me, that gave me today an explanation for the naval expedition of Rajendra Chol. The Indians were apologetic. We have been telling all the time that we were always peaceful, but once Rajendra Chol sent the expedition. But today I understood when I got a clear picture of what is happening in Indian Ocean. Chola's expedition, all Indian states in the Dharma Shastra, it is clearly written that your empire where you will fight is this Bharatabars, not outside it. Rajendra Chol has to, had to go out because it seems to me, this is a hunch of a historian, that there was much nyay on Indian Ocean at that time. Friends, many thanks for your kind attention to me. Many thanks to all the officials. And these days when I come from Southeast Asia, where I am in Banprast and I will take sannyasa also, then I rediscover India. And I am amazed to rediscover India. You have to invest in Southeast Asia. India is very rich. This I am not saying from the statistics which you pour out. In 1965, I went as a, French, a scholarship with the French government for five years. And at that time, government of India gave only $8 to everyone. Now I get $10,000. Friends, you are government of India is very rich. And the other thing is, forget about it. I have been telling and advising the, the, the embassy of Cambodia all the time, and we could establish Sanskrit uh, chair, etc. The thing is that your decision, your idea that there should be reciprocity, reciprocal, that your people will go, they will give you how to say, uh, hotel, this and that, and then they will come and this reciprocity will not go. You are thinking, Ministry of External Affairs is thinking that you are doing a tapram. But now the Hindu temples, so-called Hindu temples, they are not the part of only archaeology. They are part of the politics. Why China is also restoring a Hindu temple in Angkor, friends. Try to understand and invest money. Thank you.